Okay, so let's start uh, even for this evening. This evening. Um, at this point uh, in the in the course, when you already started uh, or you are already advanced in the design of your project, uh, uh, one topic with that means that, sh that should be discussed is uh, uh, the best selection of components or solutions uh, to deliver a given functionality. Okay, and many discussions in the lab <coughs> around this. How how can I <coughs> sorry what kind of sensor what kind of device what kind of uh, approach could they use can i use uh, or could my project exploit uh, uh, to uh, implement that uh, some given functionality okay so um we we should say learn or force ourselves to exploit some uh, uh, design exploration let's not uh, try to uh, reason in a top way uh, in a bottom-up uh, uh, way uh, where we are constrained by a given component or a given sensor just because it's the only the first one that came to my mind or just because it's the one that is so available in the lab hmm? so this is the the idea for for today's talk and uh, first of all i'd like to remind you very quickly uh, for example of the equipment that we have in the lab okay so it's something that many of you have already seen uh, we we told you that at the beginning of the course uh, that here we have a small powerpoint with all the material that are available in the lab and i saw that some of you are you know, browsing through it uh, just to um, to check whether what you need is already there uh, um, available material uh, is not the complete set of material that you can use in your project okay there could be some other devices sensors or whatever that maybe are available in the lab uh, because they were bought by other courses or by other teachers and we can maybe exploit them or maybe also you know that besides the the Ladispe, we have the click lab where people are doing experimentation and hackathons and challenges and so on and they also have some sort of equipment uh, they also have that 3d printer for example and so there's a, a good agreement uh, also to exchange uh, whatever is needed so let's try not to be too man too much limited but but by, by what you see in this slide uh, and try you know, to think uh, also about what can be available also maybe in the department of computer science or in the department of electronics in the led labs or whatever maybe they have some equipment some sensors some devices that we can use so we <laughs> we are as the teachers we are here to to help you also get in contact with people when we see or we think there can be a solution available okay let's try not to uh, to be limited by that hmm? and in some cases uh, as we already mentioned with some group uh, uh, we could also buy some devices uh, uh, specifically if you need them and of course if the cost is not uh, is not too high compared to the others so you already know that uh, you can lend some uh, or use in your project uh, uh, the raspberries for your project but you also have some some shared ones uh, that are already connected and those ones uh, have uh, a, an, a public IP address so you can run applications on these raspberries in the in the, in the bench uh, that uh, it's also visible from outside the Politecnico if you're running something inside uh, uh, your network uh, or inside the edurom network or inside the mei wi-fi uh, you can see the devices that are un under the same wi-fi but they you cannot uh, um, reach them from outside the, the polytechnical mm, but if you want to if your application needs uh, maybe uh, something to be accessed by a smartphone outside the Polytechnico and then you can deploy some applications here so they are there now the, the, these raspberries are just sitting there idle one of them has the raspberry for controlling Z-Way devices uh, uh, interfaces and uh, uh, the other ones are just uh, you see that customizable on request so you can just say okay I want I need to uh, run an application and a, in a rest server an API server that should be accessible just uh, tell us and then uh, you can deploy it there hmm? 
and so we overcome some limits uh, we also have the bridge for controlling the u lights uh, and this is uh, shared uh, between all the lamps and the led strips uh, in the lab that we only have one access for that and um, it's uh, the the bridge is here it's this round box uh, that will control all the u lamps uh, uh, available in the lab uh, all the in general all the philips devices so this is the the centralized uh, device will okay all the information uh, to access it but we, we don't get into, into details today uh, we have some uh, bulbs and the LED, led strip controlled by the philips u system which is independent from the transbed okay it's uh, something that lives on its own it's just uh, and it's published uh, so the, the device is published on the mei wi-fi network so it can be accessed uh, internally on on our say private wi-fi um, there is one if you need to use uh, the wave devices you can use the raspberry which is already equipped with the interface on the bench or you can you, we have some additionally additional shields additional interfaces to put on your raspberry if you want to use uh, another one in your project hmm? so you need the uh, there, there is one that is in the bench and the other more than three are available uh, for the project and uh, don't uh, underestimate this kind of devices they are limited in functionalities they do some they only do something this one is only able to measure the, the, the power flowing through the plug and also switching the plug on, on, on and off so it's quite limited there are multi sensors but uh, the big advantages of these devices is that is they are extremely easy to use so you don't need to do any interfaces any programming any connectivity and any, any cabling and so on you just uh, read the data from the api and then you're, you're ready to go so uh, there are finished components that are easy to integrate in the project so this was born as a door and window sensor but in general whenever it, it can also be used as a sort of a presence sensor a contact sensor or something anything else that can be open or closed or uh, or uh, um, sitting or, or or standing or something that just depends on the close proximity of two different objects so we can start to think about these devices in different ways um, uh, from what they were initially designed okay um, so this one is also a sensor that can detect uh, motion in the environment and light in the environment so it can also be able to detect whether a person is present because somebody is moving there okay, so there can be one way of detecting a person one of the many different ways and um, and for something more complex you see that we also had all this uh, um, smart home equipment uh, that can also simulate all the lights uh, uh, there's a curtain that can be used to simulate uh, a door or a window uh, there's also some audio video capabilities so there's a display there's a radio if you need to play some sounds uh, so it can be used uh, uh, it has a specific protocol it's not the wave but uh, it's uh, something that uh, can be just uh, access over, over the network so it's a serial protocol over uh, over uh, ip and then we are we have all the wearables we have more than one so different types uh, because each of them has a different different characteristics um, well lots of uh, platforms so raspberries um, arduinos and so on so they are available um, you already know that we have the smart watches uh, the beacons so smart watch in general it can be it already has some basic functionality so if we want to uh, know the activity of a person the location the number of steps uh, it's already something that's already uh, uh, preloaded with the operating system but additionally it, it's, a, it's an android device that uh, can be programmed uh, with additional applications if you want if you need uh, to have access to data that the predefined uh, uh, bracelet cannot give you because these are quite uh, uh, they are nice they are uh, uh, easy to more or less easy to use because they have an api on the cloud but they are very limited in, in what you can what they can do 
they are only designed for one specific purpose there are there's no programmability uh, in, with them and then the the beacons uh, are devices that can be located uh, by a bluetooth interface so they are they in basically they are uh, they contain a battery and a bluetooth radio that's it and their job uh, is just to uh, emit a signal on the, as a bluetooth uh, beacon signal with their own mac address with their network address that's how they do they are different in shape in size uh, and also the size these are bigger these are smaller these are th thought to be attached to some walls some markers so that uh, your smartphone when you walk can detect uh, if you are approaching a given place this is the designed usage you can also change it you, know? you may have the marker attached to the person and then check whether the person is approaching some door or some window some location where you put uh, maybe a, a, a computer a smartphone or a or a battery with a bluetooth receiver so you ca we can mix uh, around stuff uh, in a way that were not intended in, uh, originally okay uh, it depends it just uh, the, that the matter is that they are they check the a bluetooth enabled device can measure more or less the distance between these more one or more of these beacons hmm? in general you can use uh, to detect whether you are close to a, a, a location or if you have more than two or three you can understand the, the more or less coarse location of the user is the user closer to this side or to that side of the environment we, you will never have the precise location unless uh, well actually you can do if you do a, a sort of a calibration so you take measurements uh, of a user in different places and you, re and you re record the the pa uh, signal power received by three or more beacons and then you have a map uh, that tells us okay if you are in a given location i expect the power to be seen to be in these numbers and then we, when you measure the power you you just check your measurements uh, whether it's close or it's close which for to which configuration is closest so you could with a it's a bit it's not painful just boring calibration phase uh, you can have uh, more precision if you are still in the range of the beacons so uh, the smallest ones uh, i have a sticker behind them so you can uh, you could stick them to objects uh, and they are they they're smaller uh, so they have a, a shorter battery life but uh, the, um, the operation mode is the same hmm. and uh, other sensors many other sensors that can be attached to basically usually to uh, to arduino boards because many sensors only have a, an analog interface so they produce uh, a, a, re a result which is in uh, in current or in resistance or in capacity so it needs an analog input to be sensed to be measured while the raspberry doesn't have any analog ios they, it only has uh, digital input outputs so many of these in many cases probably in the project needs an arduino board just to do the stupid digital to analog convert oh sorry analog to digital conversion for many other cases you don't need for the logic of your of your system because the logic will be probably in the central server which is on the cloud or which is on the raspberry where you have all the programming capability of a full operating system you can do whatever you want instead of just having a very restricted environment uh, programming environments uh, li like uh, like the arduino and, and so ma in many cases you need to to have this uh, intermediate uh, there could be also another option so if you have an analog device sensor and you don't need really the complexity of arduino for doing nothing more than digital to analog conversion analog to digital conversion we could have a sh uh, um, raspberry shield so there are shields to be to be on to install on top of the raspberry that contain just the conversion analog to digital or digital to analog if you need to, to output something so uh, it's another option you don't need to have another cpu with another 
uh, software running but just an, an, um, an IO component uh, an input output component on the Raspberry if you want that so there are many possibilities that's uh, the topic of today is uh, don't stop at the first possibility hmm? try always to uh, to analyze many of them and for uh, connectivity or for interfaces also we have a lot of different devices like well, connectivity will be a bluetooth or via wi-fi in some cases bluetooth or wi-fi is already on board of the newest raspberries for example but if you need to give connectivity to an, uh, an older device uh, we have the dongles to enable that uh, we have uh, a small screen so it can be used as a small screen but it's also touch sensitive so it can be used uh, more traditionally you can use the touch to operate an interface but not only huh? it's again uh, a touch screen can be used also to detect contact of two different objects for example or the location of the contact or the show of a direction or of some movement or something like that so it's a device that we, we can use uh, in a way that we're behind be behind what uh, was uh, uh, designed for uh, microphones that are for the analog inputs uh, of uh, of all the raspberries because the newest one of it only has the digital in audio input so they're not good for um, analog microphones uh, webcams uh, they are usb molders so you can connect them to computers or to raspberries or to an adapter also maybe to a to a tablet if you want um, and speakers that um, are wired or wireless speakers that you can combine so there are ma many ways of doing the same thing that's what we try to achieve we don't we didn't buy 27 different speakers we bought some of them but with different characteristics okay um, there's a whole uh, set of devices uh, uh, for um, RFID near field communication protocol so you know it's uh, uh, again some proximity level protocol where uh, you with a, with a reader the reader can be attached to any computer to a raspberry or to a pc okay and uh, you can detect and you can read data that is stored onto some external device so a key fob a key ring uh, a sticker a, a, a business card a bracelet that they that have the ncc nfc um chip on board okay these chips can be read or written so you can st store that on them and you can read them either with a reader or more likely with any smartphone so if you want to check the location of a user or to identify a user you just match maybe uh, a user bracelet with a smartphone reader that you put somewhere in the place or maybe the smartphone is with the person and the sticker is in the place so there are many combination you can imagine or different users i remember last year there was a group uh, where uh, two people were handshaking and so the handshake uh, exchanged data between the two because the, they were close enough to communicate when they shook hands uh, and so they changed their identities uh, in that project so uh, it's something that where both uh, uh, elements were moving with respect to each other no one of them were in a, in a fixed place so we have just the basic components and it's up to us uh, to complete um, we have uh, for the arduinos a small printer if we need if you need to to print a small receipt a ticket or something like that and a small robot so if you need to move some items some objects it already has uh, one two three four probably five uh, motors one at every joint two three and then it rotates here and it can uh, close and open the, the fingers so probably are five, are five degrees of freedom it's very basic so it's not a full industrial strength robot uh, it's plastic one it can be controlled directly by the arduino and uh, uh, it's uh, it's not very easy to program very good well, it's it's too easy to program I would, I would say because you can control each of the motors independently the problem is that if you want to do some complex movements all the cinematics uh, or the which are the command that they need to give to each motor to good to do this moment uh, it's a it's a computational problem that you do maybe in the courses of robotics uh, next years 
uh, it's up to you it's not already automatic if we had uh, a real industrial robot you just give them the coordinates and all the computations in the in the robot to to do the right movements to reach those specific coordinates right now this is very basic but if you only do need to do very simple movements like one degree of freedom or two degrees of freedom go down pick and close and so on it can be useful instead of assembling your own device okay so always trying to so do something and transform it uh, into something else uh, and then we have all the driving uh, interface uh, which is uh, uh, designed to be connected to a to a pc because it has all the drivers and you can recognize uh, all the, the, the functionalities as uh, so it, this basically internally is a sort of a, a, a game controller you see there's all the buttons and joystick of a game controller uh, plus some additional inputs but uh, windows sees the, the device as a normal uh, game controller and then you can use it in your application if you need so this was just you already knew this no? i tried just to refresh your memory hmm? uh, to do the other to to see them the other way around right now this is a bottom-up uh, uh, showcase we have this and this and that and that and that each of them have different capabilities and limitations each of them was designed with a purpose but maybe we can use it also in different ways so to do an exercise uh, let's play this game what can i use for so are there different ways to achieve a given result yes and which is the best way uh, for my project i don't know but at least i should think at different ways and try to find the one that fits best my needs uh, and it's easier to implement and maybe it more or less uses or reuses the same components that, that I already might have in my project for other reasons. So, for example, what can I use for detecting people in a space? So, I have a room. I want to know, well, depends on the question, whether a person is in the place or whether a specific person is in the place so actually there are two different tasks huh? detecting any people or detecting a specific person so let's try with the easiest way Now, imagine that your uh, project needs to know whether in this room there are some people or not. What, what can we use? A webcam. Okay, webcam. Plus some software for detecting people or not yes or maybe just for detecting faces. for faces or movement if people are not dead usually they move so I don't need anything sophisticated to identify your head and shoulders and arms and legs just say okay this is a is this a still picture or this is is there any movement uh, above a given threshold of course in this image it depends of course uh, on what you need but always try to think is there any easier solution do you uh, i not need to count people okay but the, the question is uh, is there anybody or not so you don't really need the, to identify the person identifying faces would be dangerous because if people are seen by their back you cannot see the face so if you if you start with this idea oh i find the faces 
you will end up with having at least four cameras in the four corners so it's a lot of complexity that you really don't need hmm? so this one i don't like it because it only makes it more complex hmm? so this is one possibility uh, other possibilities We have a device for that. Here, motion. So it's a sensor that already usually is uh, works in the with the infrared usually, and it just uh, checks uh, periodically every. 30 seconds or whatever it's uh, can be in some cases can be programmable it checks whether there is some echo closer than the previous time hmm? so you can you can use a well just a z-wave motion detector hmm? the one they use for se uh, security systems so if you move really, really slow, it doesn't see you. But if you move a bit faster, you will uh, you be detected by the, the sensor. Then other options. Come on, you are engineers. If you have a sensor at the door, you know if someone is entering. Okay, can be so a sensor like okay, uh, sensor detecting entrance or exit on door. It's a it's dangerous huh? a lot of times i already heard the people say okay we can use sensors on the doors or cameras or whatever to count how many people are in a classroom to know whether a classroom is empty or not or uh, but it's uh, you, you can imagine it depends on, on the on the location okay uh, you can imagine classroom the big classroom number one three five when there's a uh, exchange of hours uh, it's it's impossible to count uh, in that way by incrementally uh, counting people going in or, in or out but in some cases it can be done when you need to be sure of how many people enter a room what do you use never gone to the uh, to watch a match a football match <laughs> i don't know the english word okay but uh, the tornello okay there are people counters yeah, also the supermarket okay so it's a rotating door uh, gate I don't know them do you know the the, the uh, English word for that okay okay but it's another possibility it's very cheap it's just <laughs> metal <laughs> okay with a count with a step counter inside one bit 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 huh? nothing more one in the entry and the other in the exit if you can control the entry and exit depends of course then people make noise they speak they move they shuffle so microphones maybe depends on what they do on the place whether if you already have a lot of background noise of course you cannot rely on that but if, if it's a place which is more or less silent you can detect the noise that people make maybe so depend all of this depends of course which is the best solution we don't know it depends on the context the microphone for detecting noise or speech so if people speak uh, it's easier to 
to detect because speech is only in a given range of frequency so we can filter our microphone and be more precise and be able to distinguish background noise from from uh, spoken text hmm? uh, other ideas it uh, depends if you don't need any let's say immediate number but you only need a, an, a measurement that may be late not in real time people tend to breathe so a, a gas sensor can be used if the co2 level gas sensor are easy to to get if the CO2 level is increasing, and uh, of course the, the, um, the rate of increase depends on the number of people that are breathing, more or less. If it's constant or dropping, then people are... Uh, this is dangerous if you have a controlled environment like this, okay? In this classroom, the air is constantly filtered and usually the CO2 is removed, okay? So in, it won't work here because the CO2 is under control by the air conditioning system. But in other places where there's low exchange of air, it can be it can be a way. Or also it can be a temperature sensor. You know, a person generates 100 watt, more or less. Okay. So, if the environment is small, the temperature will grow. And if there's no exchange of heat, uh, it may. Uh, this also can be, since we emit heat by, by living, and uh, it can be also an infrared camera. Hmm? That you only see the infrared, usually, if there is no living person or or something that emits uh, uh, heat uh, you with our infrared camera you see everything dark everything is black and you only see the, the spots uh, where there is heat being emitted and by the way we already know the temperature so heat means a color yeah, every temperature means a different color in these uh, heat signature cameras uh, this uh, one problem is that these cameras are very expensive because usually they are for industrial reasons and so on and so they're high-end uh, devices there are no something like a webcam that that costs uh, some 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 tens of dollars uh, to, to work so just for a stupid things we have uh, seven or eight different alternatives some are more you know convoluted some are more strange some are more straightforward but of, of course it depends uh, on the other features of my system which one i should uh, should use then i okay once I, each of them has so of course some implications so uh, the rotating gate i must have the gate i must have the counter i must interface it and so on so something to to design hmm? but maybe this i already a function other functions in my in my project hmm? and uh, which is very different if I need to detect whether a specific person, Philip, is in the space or not. So I need not just to know whether there is somebody, but whether a specific person is, in, is there. So in a way, I need to check who is there. To identify, not just detecting, but identifying. So I need to have a way to distinguish person to per from person, a person from a different one. So you, we can have, we can tag people. So tags, uh, for example, uh, RFID tags, uh, bracelet tags. But this requires a close range 
so the person needs to uh, you know have their bracelet into some centimeters from the reader so maybe something they do when they enter or maybe something they need to do for opening the door but if i walk into a room and you have uh, uh, tags on you i cannot read them unless i go close to you so only if uh, uh, when if some contact is required we don't know it depends maybe uh, on the project people need to touch an object we need to take pick up something we need to enter some information otherwise we could have the the beacons attached to a person these ones have some meters of range not centimeters three to ten meters bluetooth more or less so we can cover a room like this with uh, uh, readers in the room so we have more readers so we have the the user that wears a tag in this case it will be a bluetooth tag and the different readers that will check the, per the presence of this person or face recognition if you can make it work without hats and without but okay but uh, it, it's a possibility it's a possibility you put a camera close to the entrance pointing up uh, and you try to get a person's face and hope to have a, a robust algorithm for for face matching it's possible okay um, it's another option face recognition plus camera um, if the person right now the person has uh, some passive device I own a face, I own a tag, I own a bracelet. But what if I own some active device? I own a smartphone. So the smartphone could be the one that detects that I am in a room. In a room. I, I'm turning the problem uh, the, other way, the other way around. It's not the room that detects the person. But it's the person that detects uh, it is in the, he is in the room, right? So it's easy for the smartphone or a user to know where he is and to give this information to the system. You just need an application on the phone that monitors some information that tells it where, whether it's in the, that location or not. Hmm? So, for example, a smartphone app that senses uh, bluetooth beacons in the room so it's always bluetooth beacons like this but we are just switching the sensor and the the active device or um, senses a wi-fi published in the room if you are there maybe you are covered by a wi-fi access point your phone will connect to that access point and your phone will know that it's connected to that access point also the access point knows by the way if you can uh, play with the firmware of the access point maybe it will not be a consumer access point you implement your own access point with a raspberry and then you have all the information the log about mm -hmm. who is connected to when there are many projects that do this kind of trick but the easiest one is the phone that once connected you can you have an event on your application network connected you can get all the information of the access point and even if the network covers different uh, 
a wide area you have different access points that you can connect to and uh, uh, each of them have, have a, has a unique mac address so you can also distinguish between the different access points of the same wi-fi so the user the user always sees the same wi-fi id but the, the phone knows the specific uh, access point so it's another possibility i think other strange uh, strange projects uh, where but there are ideas just to throw on the table uh, or a specific uh, sound signature of the room so i use the microphone to listen what happens and in the room i'm playing like that some sound which is not uh, uh, in the hearing frequency so some ultrasound for example with a with a call with a binary code so i'm sending some pulses beep 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 beep, beep in uh, non hearable frequencies but they can be got by gotten by the microphone so the microphone will see in a given range of frequencies a pattern that will identify uniquely that room it may seem strange it's, it's easy to do you just have a, a, an audio file to play in loop and uh, you re record in real time the microphone you filter a given frequency and you just see whether you have you have uh, a square wave of the shape with the duration and shape that you expect and also see also something it's more difficult uh, light signature I saw some project where data is sent to user devices using the lights this is very difficult not for us but since the uh, the lights uh, uh, we don't perceive any uh, say fluctuation over 50 or 100 Hertz so if I'm uh, modulating the light here on a frequency higher than 100 Hertz the eye doesn't perceive it we so you don't feel you don't see anything but the the camera on, on your phone will see is able to measure that hmm? just okay let's not stop our our design space hmm? then of course these are something that has, needs to be created rfid is just ready is there it's for that purpose but hmm, let's not stop there um, okay are there any other ways of course there are al always explicit ways okay the person presses a button or something like that or swipes a card okay you have your card you need to swipe it when you enter the room that will identify you uniquely but okay that's easy okay <laughs> but uh, it's also a possibility hmm? um, okay so i don't see any other options for this task uh, locating people outside that's more difficult because in a closed space we we, saw, we said okay we have a control over the temperature over the light over the noise over the wi-fi if you need to locate a person outside where is this person in that big space outside so what possibility okay you say beacons but you could also say gps if you if you are inside e gps usually doesn't work okay or it's not precise but outside tends to work so it gives you if you are you know you don't have any big uh, buildings uh, around you it can give you a good position and so you can apply some geofencing meaning i have the, a polygon in gps coordinates uh, that delimits uh, uh, 
uh, the space that they want to check and I will check whether the coordinates of the user fall inside uh, that polygon it's a geometry task okay or beacons uh, uh, okay again we can do that in both way but usually in the environment uh, plus uh, smartphone of the user if we are in a in a wide space uh, the location can be it's always it can be vast uh, it's all it's better usually to have the intelligence in the user because the environment will have to check um, uh, uh, no, too, too many sensors to cover a wide space so in this case i would i would put low cost beacons in different places in the environment and if the user is close to at least one of them i can locate it also locating it not just saying if it's there or not but in which part with a given precision depends on our, on our need in an open space and of course th there's also always the camera or cameras to check uh, if you don't need uh, if you only have one person or if you need to know the identity of the person it would be quite easy to track people uh, when they move no there are already algorithms for doing that uh, other tasks so stop with sensing stop with the location um, notifying a user I have an information that I need to give to a user something is happening and requires the user attention okay one is easy no? smartphone notification notification on my app or on let's say Google so you have if you have an app you can register your app for a given notification or otherwise you can just uh, send notification to a user using the Google notification service which doesn't require you to have an app installed okay okay that's easy but it requires the user to it requires you to have the information of the user a smartphone requires the user to have an app installed and so on is there anything you can do without resorting to that? Sound or light? Sound or light. So flashing lights and colors. Uh, uh, playing sounds. Close to the user, probably. Uh, if there are more than one user, then course the, the the notification is in personal individual and uh, lights and sounds are shared within between all the occupants in the room uh, one variant of lights uh, flashing lights uh, is uh, numbers okay when you are uh, in line at the post office or the supermarket there are numbers you have a number and you are waiting to for that number to appear it's a old-fashioned way of saying people now it's your turn but it only works of course when the when the, um, the process is linear you have a, a, a queue of, of, of actions or, or, or users to serve it's a, var a variation of lights uh, and call okay so in general it could be showing messages or number messages so you have a board somewhere where the user is looking where you write messages hmm? like in train next stop is you can also play some uh, personal messages for example there can be ways uh, based on vibration maybe okay the vibration of the phone but also on the where the user is sitting 
of what the user is using or something that the user is wearing a bracelet hmm? it's another way it's very private by the way hmm? nobody notices that there's a lot of uh, lot not a lot of but several fast foods use this system they give you an item when you when you take the order and then the item will vibrate when the order is ready because otherwise it would be a lot of messy noise uh, number order number 15 order number 16 come and get it and so on and no, nobody will listen to this continuous stream of information hmm? of course each of these uh, requires some specific devices and to be programmed uh, in a given way but mm. let's not stop at the first one uh, understand how much something is filled up so you have a container that may contain solids or liquids or or dust or paper whatever you need to n to measure whether it's full or empty or midway one possibility is weight so there are different ways of measuring weights uh, for example with a digital scale uh, you have uh, the all these fancy shops have these digital scales with the usb connector that can also be connected to a computer record your weight uh, whether you are eating too much or not or a simpler way depends through just a, um, a load cell. A load cell is a pressure sensor, is a, is a force sensor. Basically, there are two, uh, we, have, we have some of them we bought last year, they are not in the PowerPoint, sorry, that we bought last year. There are two uh, metal surfaces with a piezoelectric material inside. And so when you press, the the joint between the two parts will bend of course to accommodate for the pressure and and the piezoelectric component will detect uh, will measure will change your resistance basically mm -hmm. so depending on the force it uh, depends on so you can measure a force you can measure a weight uh, or a or variation of the force and so on or there can also be some simple pressure sensor A pressure sensor is also usually something flat it's just a, a square or a round sensor very thin uh, one millimeter then you put somewhere and it will react uh, okay the, the, the resistance will change when it's pressed so uh, of course the digital scale of the lost cell are an give you a range of values the pressure sensor will only give you the full information when it touches the top when it's full it touches the sensor and it gives you the, the, the information it doesn't give you any intermediate measurement or there are distance sensors you know that there are these small eyes there are two uh, round uh, uh, cylinders when uh, that work in the with the radar principle one of them is emitting a radar signal and the other is measuring measuring the reflex so the sensor will give you two pulses when when the uh, the signal is emitted and the second one is received and you measure the, the time delay between the two pulses and you have the, the distance a measurement a time which is proportional to the distance so with all the signal conditioning you have a measurement that will tell you uh, maybe you are feeling something you have uh, the the distance sensor in top so we'll sense the distance between the top of the container and the content that is filling up hmm? um. or uh, yeah if you only need some uh, uh, 
some key levels some key uh, so empty okay nearly empty nearly full and full you can have just one simple sensors midway simple contact but did it reach this level or not okay i'm closing a contact so micro switches maybe enough if you are pressing the micro switch then the contact already reached that level or if it's liquid you need to protect the switch of course from the uh, for not uh, you know making short circuits or so no but or if it's liquid it's, if it's water it's even easier you just put two wires there and and the water will close the contact and you read uh, whether the contact is closed zero cost hmm? so it depends always uh, okay getting an input from a user so I want to know a number a name from a user what is your favorite color okay how can I know what the user needs to tell me you always we always start from the complex one okay voice input so you need a microphone it means in the microphone in the environment somewhere and you need the voice recognition software okay oh by the way this can be on the environment in the environment but you already have a device where a microphone and some voice recognition software is already available on the smartphone so voice on the smartphone or the good old keyboard we may have a keyboard or on the in the environment and you also need a screen you know when you are going uh, to the atm to get some money you dial the you don't just tell the the p the the, the, the code aloud on your smartphone huh? you dial the physical button because it's the best way uh, for that specific kind of interaction so let's not throw the old technologies away because in some cases they are needed or of course a keyboard virtual keyboard on the smartphone or a keyboard in the environment could be physical or touch maybe you have a touch screen somewhere you can put the number for your input touch can be also be fancier who wants a coffee raise your hands okay so for example it could be detecting some gestures in a limited context but when maybe you are already engaged you cannot you know, stop uh, you know people uh, are doing running projects so if you're running you don't stop for writing text there because then you will but maybe you can do some movement or can say something with your voice so there are different ways that the explicit intentional action from the user can be translated into input hmm? the difference between this and the first uh, uh, cases is in this case is the, the the user is passive doesn't need to do anything in those cases in the in, in now the user must be active because he must decide which kind of input uh, should be given to the system but this gesture could be detected how by a camera or these gestures can be detected by the accelerometer 
maybe on the phone or on the watch if you imagine that it's difficult maybe to with a camera to check how many people raise their hands but if they have a smartwatch and they raise the right hand of course not the wrong one and uh, it's very easy to detect and we already see that in some cases we just have to use the right devices and write some software in other cases we also need to use some physical sensor and try to interface it so it's more some are more software intensive some are more hardware intensive but i would suggest this will come later the easiest the, the ease of integration into the system the the first mm, focus would be on which is the most fit for the context of the project so there is not one way of doing the same thing turning objects on or off so i need to switch something on switch something off a motor a light uh, uh, a fan uh, i don't know there are some perfume or scent uh, emitters in some projects uh, they should be only turned off on or off when 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 needed so the easiest way is to to have a, a plug a control plug so you have you connect the device if the device is dumb enough you just need to give and, and take power to it to start and stop it you just have to pl plug it into a z-wave plug uh, these are of course limited to devices that are powered by the 220 volt alternate current of course if you have if you are having something that is low power well it depends how low, how low if it's really really low you can just use the digital output of the raspberry maybe so if you just want to control uh, an lad you just there's enough current uh, in the digital outputs uh, i don't remember if it's uh, how many million pairs you can draw for that i don't remember it's it's in the you can find it be careful not to short circuit them so uh, can be the digital outputs of uh, puts of raspberry or of the arduino and if it's not enough so very low current at 5 volts or at 3 or 1.5 volts depends uh, or 3 volt depends on the, on how you are so the raspberry runs at 5 but some are doing this runs at 1.3 so or uh, 3 1.3 depends uh, if you just need that if you need more of course you can use this digital output to drive uh, some relay or some trans uh, power transistor that it will give you the actual power that you need so it can be digital output plus power transistor or uh, relay physical relay assuming that all of these objects are dumb you just need to give and take current for to them hmm. if they are certain way intelligent you need to understand how to speak with them maybe they need some data, data exchange to be turned on or off uh, with some protocol at that point you need to, to, to negotiate with them hmm. it's not as exhaustive of course uh, there may be many cases but the idea 
for today was to play with you this game okay so there are many different ways and there can be some of them can be really strange hmm? but it won't stop us from from finding a solution which is uh, suitable for the project and uh, easy enough to integrate of course easy depends uh, on the rest of your project depends also on your skills which one is the easiest okay. but uh, these are more or less uh, some frequent cases that we find in many projects but of course your project every project has their own specific cases and so you should start okay the idea is that instead of spending one month in trying to implement a bad solution spend one week uh, in trying to explore more than one and implement a good one in another week and then you have two weeks to spare to go to the to the seaside or, or, or wherever else but not 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 with this weather hmm? of course uh, it may be it may imply that we need we have to learn okay say so okay gps or big console camera which ones well, we need to learn what 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 would it, what would it mean if we if we use beacons what does the software development kit allow us to do where does it run what is compatible with and the geofencing okay oh, uh, are there any libraries that will help me in doing this and the cameras are there image image processing libraries and so on so deciding which one is not just a matter of feeling i like this better but uh, it's you need to be to do one step forward in the direction of trying to understand what it would mean to implement solution one two or three and after so don't be afraid of spending some time in studying them maybe there are some demos there are some tutorials or so on just to understand what it does imply whether it's uh, powerful enough or performant enough or reliable enough so okay it's nice cameras image processing and then you have a recognition rate of one percent okay it may happen so in many cases for many projects there are demos that you can download and try and see whether they are good enough for you or not before investing too much time hmm? so before investing too much time in one solution try two or more and try to gauge their uh, their fitness uh, and their performance also mm. we usually don't care too much about performance in terms of time but more in terms of quality uh, of the results so does it get the job done or not okay so that was my goal for today if you have any questions or ideas uh, or uh, we can spend the last 10 minutes in discussions otherwise uh, today will uh, will be 10 minutes uh, home uh, earlier okay good evening